Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode five of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm Sarah. And once again, we want to make sure that you have read Diagon Alley, chapter five of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, because we will have spoilers. Um, And I'm going to jump right into the Weekly Prophet. So, Megan, let's go. Woo! Welcome to the Weekly Prophet, everybody. Um, We're down south. (laughs) (laughs) So the big news is that J.K. Rowling is back on top as the world's highest paid author, thanks to everyone's favorite book ever, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. (laughs) It's not a book, it's a a play. It's a screenplay. No, but you know what? It's not a screenplay, it's just a play. But it was released as a book to be sold. No. Yeah. Any play you've ever read <laughs> in book form is still a play. Katie Understandable. And I are however, it was released as a script book, which catapulted J.K. Rowling back to the top of Forbes' highest paid authors list with her year's earnings coming in at $95 million. Can Ooh. she spare a mill our way? Honest to God, please send us money. Just take care of my student loans. <laughs> us, us millennials who have college degrees <laughs> would love just a smidge. But you know what? She... Uh, she gives back. And she has Lumo. So. She'd love to give back to me, wouldn't she? No, not you in particular. Me, though, yes. I will also <laughs> say, though, that Fantastic Beasts helped catapult her back into yeah. number yeah. one as well. So. Yeah, well, I mean, rightfully so. She should be up top. Well, yeah. and it kind of brought, um, like, the Wizarding World back into, yes. like, focus, like... You know, yeah. Don't forget no, 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 about no. us. We still are here, and, and we have like, more to add to the story. And like the media's focus. Yeah, and, and like media everybody focus, else, like yeah. oh, you know, it's reviving. Yeah. Can we just okay? So on in this article, which is actually from MuggleNet, they have the top ten highest paid authors. Oh yeah. Okay. Can we compare J.K. Rowling to E.L. James, please? Oh my God. What's the difference? J.K. Rowling is ninety-five million, okay. and E.L. James is. 11.5. Is that number two? Nine. She's number well, two. Who's number two? James Patterson. Oh, okay. Well, that I makes sense. I'd like to read him, I think. Uh, 87 what? million. Well, that's a substantial difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then it drops down. The third best is 21 million. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't she also yeah. richer than the queen? I don't know. She, is she still was at one point, but then she lost that status because she of gave, donations. Yeah, she gave it away. Um, but she may have jumped. I'm not sure. Um... But yeah, I just find it because E.L. James is like, you guys are gonna in hate a me. way. Who is E.L.? <laughs> Fifty Shades. Oh, Fifty Shades, Shades of Grey. Well, that's why I don't know. I mean, I've read those, but. Did you really? Yeah. Oh. I just find it funny because it's like, well, what, what was the last book? Harry the- Potter Twilight rev like rivalry because Fifty Shades of Grey is based off of a fanfic from Twilight. <laughs> Did you know that? I had no idea. So yeah. yeah, so like, what do you guys say? Yeah, like you know. Every, I thought everyone knew that. So like, that Christian, was big news. Christian was Edward, and Anna was Bella. Oh my gosh! They yeah. changed it and made it explode. Yeah. Which That's didn't didn't cr- she that, say no. there was like an interview? My um, school. That book kicked Harry Potter off like the number one. Selling Which book? book? I think the first Fifty Shades of Grey book. Oh, okay. She goes. She like made a joke. She goes, "Oh, if Harry had been like." A little more crafty with his wand or something like that. Oh, I do know that quote. That's funny. That's funny. She's like, I would have sold more books. What else has uh, E.L. James written? That's it. it? So that's why. Is it a man or a woman? I don't know who that is. A woman. Oh, okay. So she's on there because of those books? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I did not know that about the fanfic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'm just. It's kind of cool that a fan fiction can turn into... When did that come out, though? Because like, I did read all of the Twilight books. I don't really know. A while ago. years ago. Oh, okay. Maybe five. I don't know. I was probably playing Zelda. <laughs> but, like, it's... it's uh, there are um, a lot of very well-written fan fictions. Oh, yeah. Curse Child is one of those, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> JK Megs, I love you. I feel JK like- Rowling. 
Why? I feel like we've started out the last <laughs> couple episodes just saying something about Cursed Child. We have. I mean, well, it's it's at the forefront mm-hmm. right now. I mean, it's new. It's and the haps really. that's happening right now. But I mean, it was. It came out in. Um, Oh my god, six years ago, 2011. Yeah, okay, 2011. Oh, I was graduating from college, so it was turning <laughs> I was a little busy. I was a little busy at the bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that mold. Still mead. haven't left them. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in the basement right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness! All right, well, um, let's go ahead and segue right into. Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you are you not done? No. Oh, okay. Don't forget to review us on iTunes and let us know on Facebook because That's then true. we'll send you a swish and click button, and this will help us get on new and noteworthy, which would be super awesome, and we would really appreciate it. Do we want to at all give koozies away? We can't give all of them to everybody because there's only twenty. Maybe we'll do a contest. We um, can do a koozie contest. (laughs) I like that alliteration. (laughs) We did get koozies made, guys. Not too many, but uh, maybe we will. We could do out. A, we could do a, like a drawing for the koozies. I mean, yeah, we're gonna give you a button, you guys. If you review us, oh, we're, yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah. send you a button. But um, maybe we we'll, can since we'll koozies a are a little. We'll do a thing on Facebook. So make sure that yeah. you like us on Facebook and leave a comment on iTunes. Give we'll us have a rating. A couple of different rules for the giveaway. Yeah, we'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we'll give you a signed picture of me because you know you want that. <laughs> we'll give that to the losers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we good now? Yes. yes. All right. Let's segue again into chapter four highlight from the previous episode, Katie. Yeah. So last time we covered chapter four, Keeper of the Keys, uh, Harry just found out he was a wizard. We talked about Petunia and Vernon's hatred, Voldemort's first rise to power. We dove pretty deep into Lily and James's death, R.I.P. Um, we talked about Hagrid's loyalty, and we had a fun little segment of what's in Hagrid's pockets, which <laughs> I'm sure we'll be continuing on as we go through this first book. But now we're moving on to one of my favorite chapters, Chapter 5, Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? The meme. Can we just talk about that for a quick second? Yeah. The meme and <laughs> Dan Radcliffe's eyes are like, he, yes. they caught him in like this mid like weird roll, and it's like... <laughs> Diagon Alley, and it's just like a slew of letters into nonsense. Please look up that meme. I don't know what it's or called. Or we'll post it. We can po- yeah, we can <laughs> oh, post we'll it post on, it. You're right, you're right. We'll post it on our social, on our media. social media after you <clears throat> like and rate us. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Hagrid and Harry leave the hut on the rock and head to London. While on the way, Harry looks over his letter for the things he has to buy for school. Telling Hagrid he doesn't have any money, Hagrid tells him about Gringotts and how his parents didn't leave him with nothing. They head to the Leaky Cauldron, where everyone seems to know exactly who Harry is and are happy to meet him. He, met, he meets Professor Quirrell, specifically, and then they go through the passage to uh, Diagon Alley, and Harry is amazed. <laughs> Do you see what it says? Harry is amazing at all he sees. <laughs> Clearly, I can't read. He is amazing. Harry is amazed at all he sees, cauldron shops, broomsticks, and gringotts. They head there first to get money, and while inside, they take the cart deep inside the bank, first to Harry's vault, which is filled with many coins, and then to vault, <laughs> it's supposed to say, 713. <laughs> Which what has does one it say? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking for it. <laughs> Which has one small package that Hagrid is picking up for Dumbledore. After they make their way to start Harry's school shopping, he is picking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Sir, I can't struggling. Read. Problems reading. Do you need to come to my class? <laughs> Probably. All righty. All right, so after they make their way to start Harry's school shopping, he goes to Madame Melkin's for his robes and meets a boy named Draco Malfoy. He doesn't care much for, for much. Hagrid buys Harry an owl for his birthday, and they head to Ollivander's for his wand. After a few tries, his wand chooses him, and it turns out that the core of his wand is the same core as Voldemort's wand. Later, Hagrid takes Harry back on the train to go back to the Dursleys and gives him his ticket for the Hogwarts Express. Right. So <clears throat> starting off this chapter, um, Harry is asleep underneath Hagrid's coat, which um, can we just point out how cute it is that Hagrid tosses his coat to Harry and he's like, kip under that. It's so cute. He's so caring. So um, poor Harry Potter. He always believes that um, the good things that happen to him are good to be true, too good to be true. 
and they just can't be true. And so we saw this when he was at the zoo and, um, you know, we see it now. And so when he wakes up underneath Hagrid's coat, he feels like it's all a dream until he hears, you know, a sound of rapping on the window and he thinks it's Petunia tapping on his cupboard door for him to like wake up and probably, I don't know, make breakfast or clean something. (laughs) Make some more bacon. Yeah. (laughs) Mind the bacon. And uh, it ends up being an owl. And um, so Hagrid's coat falls off of him and he realizes that it's real. And, you know, you just get this euphoric feeling that like he's just so excited and finally something good is happening in Harry's life and something, something that's real and something that's good is happening in his life. So um, do you think that this could be his first feelings of like true joy? I think yeah. Probably. Yeah. Just think I about think how sad that is. Whenever yeah. he tries to create a Patronus, he thinks about this as one of his happiest memories. But then I believe Remus says that that's probably not happy enough or something. Mm-hmm. Or no, um, no, I think that this was the, is the memory. Isn't this the memory? The that broom, makes I think, him, was the memory that him wasn't flying for the first time was the one that wasn't strong enough. I think that this. Goodness, I don't it's remember. It's one of them. I don't, I don't know. Really. Or it's like some memory he's made up in his head about being with his parents. I think that might be it. But yeah, that's what it is in the movie, right? See, so there's that movie saturation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. that's why we're doing. This. But you know what? We, we love the movies. We do. I do. Yeah. It's yeah. just I wish I like that I could differentiate them more easily because I've watched them so many times. Well, I think doing this podcast is going to help us really remember what's book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so. He's waking up, it's real, and we're going to go ahead and dive on in to the first place they go. Yeah. So um, when they get to Diagon Alley, they, the first place, well, actually, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is before they are going to Diagon Alley. They're discussing how Harry's going to pay for everything. And he doesn't understand how. He's like, I, I don't have any money. You've heard the Dursleys. They're not going to help me out, right? Right. So Hagrid explains what Gringotts is to him. He says it's Goblin Run. It's the safest place in the world. And then Hagrid makes it seem like there's only one wizard bank in the whole world, which I think is kind of... That can't be true. I mean, how is that possible? What do you think he means by that? Do you think he means that maybe Gringotts is the only wizard bank, but there's multiple branches or does he literally mean there is only one Gringotts? So when we were first talking about this, when we were playing this episode, that was my idea was that Gringotts was the main bank. But then if you have to think like we have African wizards and, you know, U S wizards. So I thought that Gringotts probably had branches. I wonder, which probably not, if we would see that in any Fantastic Beasts because they're located Maybe. in the U.S. It would be really cool if we got to see, like, the U.S. Gringotts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or if it's something different. But he said it's the only bank. He says it's the only wizarding bank. But what if it's the only one in England is what I'm Maybe. saying. Because yeah, we don't know 100%. Have. Maybe that is what he meant. Yeah. But uh, if he didn't mean that, I would hope that there would be, like, branches. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. see people. Well, you can apparate, I guess. It's interesting. Yeah, but it's supposed to be harder to apparate like across the country, yeah, far. across from country. Is that to why country. Newt came by boat? Yeah, yeah got I think so. Well, that's why. Um, well, that's got to be annoying. I want to call it flu powder, and that's not what I'm talking about. Porky. Mm. Oh, right. ah, it's, it's yeah. interesting to think mm. if yeah, because for the World Cup, everybody was using porkies. If goblins, because in the UK they're trusted with money, it seems. It's or are they like that at other countries as well? You know, yeah. or do goblins have the same professions in the United States as they do in Africa or the yeah. UK? I don't know. I would think so. Since it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We can speculate. Yeah. We'll have to see if we find out anything with the new Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. yeah that, that would, would be, be so freaking cool if we got to see like a U.S. Green Gods or even whatever the U.S. Well, they're going to be in yeah. Paris, which... But for the whole movie, they're going to be in Paris? So maybe that Ooh, we'll oh. get to see the French version. Who knows? Yeah. Mm. Les Gringots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on top of that, we see the owl come and deliver this paper, and then Hagrid tells him to pay it with the little 
knuts in his pockets. Another thing in Hagrid's pockets is some money. I call it nuts. I, I call them nuts too, but because KN is. Are you Jim, nuts? Jim Dale does say knuts. Jim Dale says knuts. Does he really? He does, but mm-hmm. I've always called them nuts. I don't know. I don't really pronounce them because. I call them nuts, but. Well, so. To each their own. Um, I thought that it was interesting, and I kind of want to get into this maybe a little bit later when we talk about Ollivanders, possibly, but about measurements in the wizarding world and how they're all kind of quirky. So. Obviously, we're discussing the wizarding world within Great Britain, which you would think would mean that they are using the metric system, but they actually measure in inches, feet, and miles, and then also ounces, pounds, and stones. So they kind of just have this whole combination of how they how they use measurements, and it's supposed to be that way. It's quirky. So, of course, their money is going to be the same way with Knuts, Sickles, and Galleons. And, I mean, what is the breakdown? It's like... Oh, I have it. Do you really? Yeah. Nice. I think it's funny. Um, it's 17 sickles to a galleon and 29 nuts to a sickle. Like, how easy weird enough. is that? That's not easy at all. Yeah. <laughs> so. Jeez. Um, and then also, I want to discuss the Potter fortune here. And mm-hmm. let me pull up. This is a really good Pottermore article that Joe wrote all about the Potter family. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull some of the important parts from here so that we can discuss basically Harry's entire heritage and how their fortune came to be. So Potter is supposedly a very old wizarding family, um, but it was never at the very forefront of wizarding history until Harry actually defeated the wizarding world and all that. I mean, defeated defeated the wizarding (laughs) world. (laughs) Defeated Voldemort and all that, (laughs) all that stuff. So, contenting itself with a solid and comfortable existence in the backwaters, as Joe says. Hmm. Um, Potter is not is a not uncommon muggle surname, and the family did not make the so-called sacred 28, as she calls them, for this reason. The anonymous compiler of that supposedly definitive list of purebloods suspected that they had sprung from what he considered to be tainted blood. So the Wizarding Potter family had illustrious beginnings, however, some of which was hinted at in Deathly Hollows, with them being related to the Peverils. Um... So let's go through this a little bit because a lot of this isn't really, I mean, not that it's not important, but yeah. The wizarding family of Potters descends from the 12th century wizard Linfred of Stinkholm, a local. Stinkholm? Yeah. I love it. (laughs) Does it stink? Or Stinchcomb? I don't, I don't know. A locally well-beloved and eccentric man whose nickname the Potterer became corrupted in time to Potter. So Linford was a vague and absent-minded fellow whose muggle neighbors often called upon his medicinal services. So the Potters actually, most of their fortune come from different potions and stuff that they've created. Love it. Um, none of them realized that Linford's wonderful cures for pox were magical. They all thought him a harmless and lovable old chap, pottering about his garden with all his funny plants. However, in reality, it was magic that was bringing these wonderful cures for all of these ailments of the time. Um, His reputation as a well-meaning eccentric served Linford well, for behind closed doors, he was able to continue this series of experiments that laid laid the foundation of the Potter family's fortune. So it started with him being the originator of Skelligro, and the Pepper Up Potion, which we hear quite a few times about within the entire series. Pepper Up is like almost a, it's almost as well known as like taking NyQuil or something or z Yeah. Some, you know, for colds and that kind of stuff. Many so, Hogwarts students were seen smoking at the ears. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, Linford had seven children, apparently. Uh, and was able to leave a significant pile of gold for each of them upon his death. So Hardwin, his oldest son, married Eolanth Peveril, who came from the village of Godric's Hollow. Um, she was the granddaughter of Ignotus Peveril, and she was the one who acquired the invisibility cloak because she was the eldest of the generation. Um, and then that was passed down to... I think there's kind of a gap here. Tradition and... 
The cloak was handed down to the eldest in each new generation. So it took a while because that was like super far back from like James even. Yeah. The Potters continued to marry their neighbors, apparently occasionally muggles, which is why I think that they were excluded from the sacred 28 because they were their muggles, blood eventually yeah. didn't become as pure. It says on Pottermore also because they don't, it's like the last name is very muggle because a lot, and right. this is real life, like a lot of last names um, have to do with what their like, not job Profession. is, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So potters, like potters pottery. are like pottery. They yeah. make pottery. So that's why they're like, mm. Yes. <laughs> um, occasionally a potter made it all the way to London and a member of the family two times sat on the Wizengamot. First was Ralston Potter, who was a member way back in the 1600s and was a huge supporter of the statute of secrecy. And then Henry Potter, who people suspect was where Harry was named after, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, he was a direct descendant of Hardwin and Eolanth Peveril and served on the Wizengamot in the early 1900s, so like into the 20s. Uh... Why? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so now we're getting really close to Harry's heritage here. Henry's son was called Fleam Fleamont Potter, and Fleamont was Harry's grandfather. Did they call him Flea? I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. I call him Monty. <laughs> so Fleamont married <laughs> Euphemia. Jeez, these names. And then... Those were the parents of James. Gotcha. Euphema? Are you sure? I think so. A euphemia. A euphema. Yours sounds prettier, but I thought it was pretty, so. Name I them don't know. What you will. Anyway, Fleamont <laughs> created Sleek Easy's hair potion, which we see some. in Goblet of Fire. And that yep. also um, obviously brought lots of riches. Money. And then that Money. is pretty Money. much Money. where James's fortune comes from. Came from. Sorry. So that's that. Did they uh, know that, that the invisible? Was that like really long and boring? It was really long, but uh, it's a lot of information. I think people will be glad to have the info. It's not boring. I just want to know. Heritage. Yeah, not boring. It was long, but it wasn't boring. Okay. Not so Nothing boring. about Harry Potter is boring. Not to the Potterheads, except for the Vernon and the Petunia Dursleys. The Vernon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish you guys could see Sarah right now. She looks She's so ridiculous. <laughs> But what's She's new? She's like sitting with her sweater over her head. It's not a sweater. It's a crew neck sweatshirt. Okay. Anywho. Did they know that the invisibility cloak was a horcrux? It's not a horcrux. It's not a horcrux. You mean a hollow? hollow. <laughs> oh. We're like this, staring at her like, You guys, what? this is like the fourth well, episode today. I'm getting a little sleepy. I've had a cup of coffee. I could probably use another. Let's be real. I cup of coffee today. Well, in the afternoon. But it, anywho, do, do, do you think they knew it was a horcrux? Hollow. Gosh, dang it, you guys. <laughs> hallow, 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 hallow. Probably, because aren't they all, aren't all of the... Um, I mean, it's an old story. Hollows from the Peverils, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think, mean, maybe it was one of those stories where... So do you think that it's like a family down. story, you know what I mean? So you think uh, James and Lily would have told Harry had they been alive? Yeah. Yeah, I think it would have been passed down properly. Okay. I think so. Sorry I kept calling it a horcrux. Or <laughs> if it if they didn't Such know a horcrux. If they didn't know it Ouch. know it was a hollow, maybe they you know, there was definitely a story around it that they would have told when they passed it down. Yeah. yeah. You know. They could have straight up pulled it from Beetle the Bard too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll take sure. it. So that's the Potter family. The Potter family. To family. So we're all dead now. Minus Harry. My That's God. Horrible. <laughs> the Potters live on with Harry, Harry. and Ginny and all those kids They're with all their now stupid gingers. names. <gasps> no, Whoa. but like the thing they read about Remus. Oh, man. touched my heart. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll accept it. Ugh. What all is right. what their is James' middle name? Is it James Sirius? Severus. No. It's Albus Severus. James Sirius, Sirius, yeah. Okay. That's why he's his favorite. <laughs> I think Harry's next kid would have been named like Dobby Creature. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen uh, uh, Hedwig Dobby, Dobby Hedwig. I don't yeah. know if he'd give uh, Creature a spot. He was. Our, I mean, he was pretty 
He was all right. Where was Ginny in the what naming would, of these children? What would be like a funny episode? Like, what would their names be? Oh my god! I still <laughs> like that one thing. It was like if all the books were named after Hermione, and the last one was like when Hermione gave her kids normal names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so back on topic. We were wondering how Hagrid got to the hut to pick up Harry. He yes. walked. He flew. <laughs> he just walked over water. He walked for days. So we were wondering, did he fly? Was it maybe that we the motorbike, a broom? I don't think it was a broom. He's a little big, but who knows? He can't um, fit a that's standard That's my broom. Hagrid yeah. that you're speaking about. He's just a large person. It's just love true, him. Sarah. He's I don't, a giant. I don't giant. I think it was giant. the motorbike because even over the storm, Harry probably would have heard it and he probably would have seen it the next morning. Revelation. Yeah, he would have taken it back, wouldn't you think? I think Arthur Weasley had the motorbike. Oh, really? Right? Yeah, but he was storing it, it in again. this garage. Eh? I don't know. Did I just Hagrid make that up? It again. Hagrid yes, he uses does. it does, again. I think anything's possible at this he, point in the yeah, day. Doesn't um, Hagrid use it to bring Harry out yeah. in this Potter thing? Seven patterns. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. No, he but Weasley, he, Arthur souped it up. Didn't right. he? Yeah. He added a little side. So did he have it that whole time? I don't know. I think he did. I don't think Hagrid took the bike, though. No. Because he would have had it leaving. Thestrals, my Yeah, we choice. were thinking Thestrals would probably be the best Well, guess. and yeah. I don't know, because I haven't read the seventh book in a long time yet, and I haven't gotten to that in my reread yet okay. either. Mm-hmm. But... The seventh movie was on yesterday, and mm-hmm. that's how Bill and Fleur yes. came from Harry, like the Dursley's house to the borough. Yes. It's on the Thestral. Mm-hmm. It makes so sense. Wouldn't, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, they're readily available at Hogwarts. He knows them. Right. He knows them. He probably interacts with them a lot. Do you yeah. think he can see them? Yeah. And he saw his dad die. Yeah. Oh, he can sad. see them. So... And it would have flown right back after Hagrid landed. And even if it didn't, Harry wouldn't have seen it. Now, some people ask why Harry couldn't see Thestrals yet because technically he saw his parents die, or at least his mom. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know if it's Joe or Pottermore. They explained he was too young that a person actually has to understand the concept of death before it would actually register. And an infant would not be able to do that. Right. Yeah. So I think that kind of cleans that up. So mm-hmm. yes. right now, I mean, clearly this is all speculation and, and opinion. but No, it says on Pottermore. No, I'm saying about the way that How Hagrid got there. Got there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it just says, doesn't it just say that he it's flew, flew somehow? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it says yeah. he flew, so that would tie into yeah. the Thestral. Yep. There's lots of things that fly in the wizarding world. Yeah. There are. So yes. My heart flies. Including Voldy and Mr. Snape floating Snape. on air. Severus Snape. Dumbledore. So then um, they head to um, London. Specifically, they're going to the Diagon Alley. They're on the train. The, the Diagon Alley. Mm-hmm. And the underground, I'm sorry. Correct. <laughs> and so um, Hagrid is reading the Daily Prophet. And so Harry's kind of like looking at it. And this is really the first time Harry hears anything about the minister Ministry of Magic. Um, and it's interesting that... Hagrid clearly doesn't like the minister, which is Cornelius Fudge, saying that the ministry is messing up as usual. And so this is Harry's first impression of the ministry and, like, that's their government. Mm -hmm. Um, And he even... So that's his very first impression of it is negative. And then he um, even says how Fudge contacts Dumbledore every single day to ask him questions. And they did. Like, he even tells him that they wanted Dumbledore for the job, but he turned it down. And then that's how Fudge got it. Um, So with Harry's first impression being negative about the ministry, like, I wonder how that affects his views on the ministry for the rest of the books. Because you don't ever see him really liking the ministry. So it sets it up for the whole thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. I think he would have gotten there on his own. Because he, you know, he feels how um, they, especially with like the Daily Prophet, mm-hmm. where they'll like re- swing yeah. things mm-hmm. a different way. And um, so I think he would have gotten there on his own, especially especially with Rita Skeeter yeah. and her articles. Well, and, and stuff. even with, um, you see later on how they treat Hagrid during the second book with all of that stuff with um, the, pri- yes. or the Chamber of Secrets. And uh, I think for Harry, anytime, like, because he knows... Hagrid, like that's his 
again, first friend. Mm. And, like, people being, like, saying that to him, he's like, I'm not accepting, like, this. No. Like, yeah. really. Well, and Fudge only like, and brings Haggard out because it would look good for them. Yes. And, like, for Harry, his number one guy that he's, like, this is the only person that I'm going to trust. A th- not the only person, but, like, the number one top person I'm going to trust authoritative-wise is Dumbledore. So, like, whatever Dumbledore says is, like, gold. Yeah. Ish. You know what I mean? To, so to Hagrid it yeah. is, yeah. No, and I'm even saying for Harry. Oh, so you're like, saying for Harry, too. Okay. So, like, as much as he's saying, because essentially he's contacting Dumbledore every single day. It's crazy. Yeah. So as much as he's not um, running the ministry, he's essentially running it. Yeah, kind of, I guess. <clears throat> but I wonder how much advice he actually gives him. I don't know. How much because, Fudge even yeah. listens. Correct. Yeah, clearly because he doesn't listen to anything Dumbledore <laughs> says in later books. Yeah. yeah. In later books, especially when everything's starting to hit the fan, when Voldemort's coming back and all that, and he denies it because he doesn't want he wants everything to be you know sunshine and daisies and um sunshine Dumb- daisies buttermellow yeah. turn this stupid fat rat yellow. Is that a real spell? <laughs> <laughs> a very good one. But, you know, I just think, like, but I wonder how much advice would Dumbledore be willing to give Fudge because Dumbledore knows that he can't trust himself with that kind of power. Yeah. Dumbledore when I, has a lot of power for not having power, if you think about it. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think he has a lot because of power more thrust people, upon him. Well, but more yeah. people trust he him seek than it. the Ministry. And that more people trust him than Fudge. And I even say, like, does does Harry feel more secure going to Hogwarts where Dumbledore is in charge, where he's trusted so much that even the minister himself is asking him advice and all these other people are like, Dumbledore is one of the most, like, powerful wizards. And even yeah. you learn later that um, Voldemort is a, the only person he's afraid of is Dumbledore. Yeah. Yep. It's very interesting. And uh, I said, how does Harry feel about hearing, first of all, that dragons are real and that Hagrid wants one? So, like, you know. He's, like, shocked, too. For any person, like, I know I would be, like, no, dragons are real and finding out, like, A, that's terrifying because, like, anything (laughs) you've ever heard of, like, they breathe fire. Like, you're going to die. Yeah. (laughs) Scary. And then, like, this bad guy's, like, yeah, I I want one as a pet. Like, and you see later on he gets his wish and he gets little Norbert. And honestly, Norberta. Harry's an integral part of Hagrid having the dragon. Because not only is he there when he pops out of his little egg. Pops out. Not hatches, but like, pops out. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks the shell. He breaks out of his shell. Um, and then <clears throat> he's integral in getting him and Hermione get the dragon out of Hogwarts. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how. Wait, out of Hogwarts? Yeah. The oh, are you talking about Norbert? I was talking about Norbert. Gringotts. Oh, what yeah, that dragon's name is? Norberta? I don't know. No, the dragon that... I know. In the Gringotts. I wonder. Oh. Clinkers. That's sad. That's sad. Oh, man. Animal cruelty. Oh, I just made myself dragon sad. Life. Dragon that shall not be named. Oh. But at <laughs> least like an iron he or belly? she is free. I think it's an Ukrainian iron, iron belly. belly. So, like, I wonder oh. what happened to it after it got free. Did, like, Charlie come and, like, Please. wrangle the thing? No. Well, can't they? Aren't dragons not allowed to be in well, England? It probably found it's found like a colony or something. No, they're definitely around because I think I remember Ron saying something to Harry about how there's a lot of issues sometimes with like muggles and they have to modify memories. I wonder if like wildfires are caused by dragons. Probably. Ooh. Interesting. Are there wildfires in England? Well, I guess I don't know. it's probably too soggy. Dragons be all over the world. Could be too soggy. It know. always is raining. I feel like I've never been there, so I don't know. You've been to Ireland. It's like right there. Yeah. Same yeah. climate. I've technically been to the UK, but I've never been to England. I've been to Northern Ireland. I've been to Belfast. Okay. Moving in. <laughs> moving in. Moving on. Moving in. So Harry gets, you know. He gets to see his letter and he gets to see the things that he needs. And as I'm reading this, so seventh full reread and Lord knows how many times I've read this individual book. I have never caught the genius of the book list and authors. And it, am I, is everybody else had that same? I didn't yeah. know until first, you pointed it out. Yeah, not until you said yeah. I never noticed. All right. So I'm going to go through the, uh, just the book list. And the only, the only one that I ever like, 
maybe noticed was Newt Scamander. Because I'm like, oh, that's right. funny. Fantastic Beasts and his name is and, Newt. Newt or Scamander, like right. Salamander. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always thought. Okay. That was the only one that I... That was the only one? Um, so, standard book of spells, grade one. Miranda Goshock. I didn't find anything for that one. I think because... Did you find you that say, one? like, we were saying, oh, maybe it's like... Gosh, and like, oh, gosh. Well, and looking... Shock. Yeah. Like yeah. spells and I they shock these you. Things. If you look at, like, the <laughs> meaning of her name... Where is it? I found it somewhere. Maybe it's Goss Hawk. Maybe. It a could goshawk be. goshawk is a large, powerful species of hawk with rounded wings, long tail, and brown or gray feathers. How does that relate to spells, though? I don't know. I was, I was thinking shock. Like, you're shocked by a shocked. spell. Shocked and appalled. And then History of Magic by Bathilda Bagshot. I didn't really... Did anybody get a connection with that one? Bathilda... <sighs> is like a old historical name or something. There's an remember. old lady and I was like, yeah. She's yep. an old lady. Anywho. Uh, there was like some I don't know about that one. Bethilda. Those are those are really the only ones that were hanging us up. I like yeah. Jigger a lot. Yeah. All right. And Spore. Get out of here. This I'm is sorry. my part. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so Oh, perfect. here it is. Like the name Bethilda, um, there's like old English meaning. It's like an Anglo-Saxon noble and wife like way back in the day. So it just is very like historical. historical. All right. And All right. Her name means heroine. So I thought that was kind of cool because that's very like history-ish too. It is. The next book is Magical Theory by Adalbert Waffling. And I just thought that was hilarious because you're like waffling and theories are like, eh, a little waffle. Just makes me laugh. <laughs> a Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch. Switch, like a switching spell for transfiguration. 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by... <laughs> is that Phililda? Phililda? Phililda Spore. Ha ha, Spore. I love it. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger. And like arson and then Jigger is a name for... When they are pouring drinks. Also, and also, uh, we believe that he's probably the founder of the apothecary and diagonal yes. called Plug and Jiggers. Yes, so that's which cool. is amazing. Which is where all the students go to get all of their potions, um, materials, potions ingredients. Yeah. yeah, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. Who's We'd, the coolest we, ever? We talked about that one. Puff Pride. Puff Pride. Yay! yay. Go Ravenclaw. Okay, you can love other houses. I do. You're such a turd. <laughs> I love other Ravenclaw houses. <laughs> you mean other Ravenclaws? Yeah. I mean, I like Hogwarts. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. And I associated Trimble with like tremble because they're dark forces and it makes you tremble because you're scared. How great. It's perfect. It's just subtle yeah. Awesomeness. Subtle, but really perfect. And I just caught that. So I want to hear from our listeners. Is that the first time that you're hearing about this? Did you catch this before? Because sometimes, you know, when you're reading that kind of stuff, when you're thinking like, oh, it's like a book list, you kind of go over it a I little don't, fast. I don't think I ever really read them. Because like, there's some parts in books where I just like, this is such a sorry to book lovers. <laughs> and I love to read, but like, I'm like, oh, I don't need to read the books. I don't, get, I don't care. I skip over it. Yeah. But like I, because this is what, in the last week where I was like, oh my yeah. gosh. When like, I brought I that up. I cannot believe that. Like was blown. My mind was blown. <laughs> I brought that up when we were planning our, uh, our uh, episode and everybody was like, oh my gosh, you know what I should have done? I should have saved that. And it had your initial reactions on there. <laughs> Next time I find something just genius yeah. like that. I'll, uh, I'll save it. You already found me. I'm a genius. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but that was his book list, and I just thought that was, that was just really amazing. So we're going to move on to um, Harry's stop at the Leaky Cauldron. That's so, in London. <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, that's in London. <laughs> it's in London right between a record shop and a bookshop. And if you've been to... Diagonally in Universal Orlando, you'll know that they did it perfectly. 
Just throwing that out there. Thank you, Universal. Thank you, Universal, for being amazing. Thank you for the Um, potatoes cooking in the oven. (laughs) (laughs) Not today. So Harry and Hagrid go into the Leaky Cauldron, and this is Harry's first experience with being recognized. Um, Everybody in the pub knows who he is. He sees, again, Daedalus Diggle, who is later a a member of the Order of the Phoenix, which is cool. Um... <laughs> and he is also extremely flattered that Harry recognizes him from before. Which Did is they cool. come for me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's bobby pin just flew out of her hair across the tape. Like flew. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I thought that it was neat that this is the first time he's recognized and he actually like experiences being famous. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm sure that was super overwhelming. Right, like it was probably just weird. Hearing you're famous. I already got that. (laughs) (laughs) Hearing you're famous is one thing, but then having all these people you've never seen before in this world you've never been in before come up to you, Mm -hmm. shaking your hand, wanting to touch you and know who you are, and oh my God, I saw the boy who lived. Yeah. Yeah. So um, some history on the Leaky Cauldron, which I think is pretty cool, is that there's lots of talk about what the oldest pub in London is. Um, And J.K. Rowling says that muggles will always tell you the wrong answer because the oldest pub in London is actually the Leaky Cauldron on Charing Cross Road. Um, So Leaky Cauldron was there long before Charing Cross Road was even planned, and its true address is number one Darien Alley. Oh, that's cute. It is believed to have been built sometime in the early 1500s, along with the rest of the wizarding street of Diagon Alley. So it was created two centuries before the imposition of the International Statute of Secrecy. And it was initially visible to muggles, which I thought was really cool. Like, muggles could go into the pub. (laughs) That's so weird. Yeah, so... Uh, Oops. (laughs) They could get too Well, didn't it say they, like, saw some, like, strange folks and they were like... "Mm." I mean, technically, they Bye. could yeah. have gotten into Diagon Alley had they explored the Leaky Cauldron more closely, because the whole secret passage to get to Diagon Alley didn't exist until the Statute yeah. of Secrecy. So, um, I wonder how many memories they had to modify. Or maybe they just didn't. They just let these people be confused. <laughs> that would <laughs> be know? hilarious. I mean, so it was Who a place... Who believe them? Yeah, really. So, um, obviously, originally, it's meant for a place for witches and wizards to congregate, congregate, but apparently muggles were never turned away or made to feel unwelcome before the statute of secrecy, even though some of the conversations or even pets that they would see caused many an unwary drinker to just leave without finishing his drink. (laughs) (laughs) So when the statute of secrecy was imposed, the Leaky Cauldron was granted special dispensation to continue its existence as a safe haven and refuge for wizard kind in London. Um, And I guess they used a couple powerful spells of concealment, uh, the Minister of Magic helped them out with that, and he was sympathetic to the fact that wizards needed some place to let off some steam, even though it was kind of a difficult situation for them to just have a pub in the middle of London. Um, he agreed further to give the landlord of the day responsibility for letting people into Diagon Alley from his backyard so that the shops beyond the pub were also in need of magical protection. So I guess also Diagon Alley was kind of um, in limbo there for a minute when the Statute of Secrecy was imposed because they didn't know how they were going to cover it. Um, So it faced one of its most difficult challenges in the late 19th century with the creation of Charing Cross Road, which is, I've never been over there, but it's apparently like a famous street, right? Mm -hmm. Let's all go. What street? Charing Charing Cross Cross Road. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't I've know. Never been. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure it's a real street. Yeah. So um, the Minister for Magic had to, I guess, go and meet with the Wizengamot to explain why the Leaky Cauldron couldn't be flattened for the building of Charing Cross Road, because apparently that was an issue, along with the Diagon Alley just being taken away. Um, so they set up this huge thing to just, like... <laughs> perform a mass amount of memory charms on the muggle town planners. They even used the imperious curse on them to try and get their way with keeping the leaky cauldron and Diagon Alley. Okay with that. Accommodated (laughs) into the revised plans for the new road. 
Um, so the Muggle architects involved never understood why they had to leave a gap in their plans for buildings, nor why that gap was not visible to the naked eye. <laughs> um, but they did it anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> the, a little has changed over the years in the Leaky Cauldron. It's always been small, dingy, and welcoming, with some bedrooms for public travelers to stay there if they're from out of London. And it's always been an ideal spot to catch up with wizarding gossip if you happen to live a long way away from the nearest magical neighbor. Yeah. So. I'd like to have a drink there. Yeah. Well, we're gonna in a couple Ah. weeks. (laughs) (laughs) So that is some background on the Leaky Cauldron, which I thought was pretty neat. It's pretty cool. Um, Then we get to Professor Quirrell. Oh, geez. So Harry meets Professor Quirrell for the first time. And I always wondered why he could touch Harry at the bar. Like, what was the timeline for him being possessed? And then I did a little bit of research, and apparently, while he was under the control of Lord Voldemort at this time, he was not possessed by him yet. Yeah, I figured I figured that. So he, apparently, the reason why he was even in the Leaky Cauldron that day was because he was going to Gringotts to attempt to steal the Sorcerer's Stone. Really? And, yes, and he was the one uh, that attempted oh, that to day. steal it later oh, that yeah, day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, and when he failed to steal it, that is when Voldemort possessed him. Interesting. Like... I can't trust you to do this. Exactly. If you're going to do something, do it yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So. And um, making him a temporary Horcrux. Yeah. In doing so. Which, yeah. if we talk, if we go back to um, discussing again how Voldemort, when he would possess things, would lessen their lifespan, mm-hmm. that kind of also is what ended up happening with Quirrell. Yeah. Yeah, he deserved it. Well. Yeah, he was also a little rat, wasn't he? <laughs> He was a vole, if you will. (laughs) (laughs) Voles are wonderful creatures. Yes, you are, Sarah. (laughs) I love all that information. And you guys, that's from uh, Pottermore, and then we've got more stuff on um, their Harry Potter lexicon, if you want to go ahead and look up those yourself. But yeah, I guess he didn't necessarily always wear a turban, and then it was just kind of this new thing that happened again whenever he came back to Hogwarts and it was because he was possessed. So I don't know if he even had a turban on whenever... He did, met him? did he have one on when he met him in the book? I don't remember, but... Um, I think he may have. I th- think he... Sarah's looking it up. It's a good question. Yeah. But apparently before this year at Hogwarts, he was not a Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher No, he only last a year. No, he I taught something. Wondered. Yeah, he taught something else. Oh, what did he At teach? Hogwarts? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, where is it? It doesn't say. It's How convenient, say. JK. <laughs> 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 Dear Joe. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Was Quirin Coral wearing a turban? Well, then I think the kids kind of came up with the... <laughs> The he Bless you. puts yeah. garlic in it, you know. Yeah, the they vampires come up with this and, funny thing. And oh, that. he taught Muggle studies. It just says a very a yeah. pale young man made his way forward very nervously. One of his eyes was twitching. See, so he may not have had a turban on. Yeah, you don't know. But yeah, he taught Muggle studies and then ended up wanting to try and like further his knowledge. So he went to the forest in Albania, came across well, Voldemort. He got the darkest of arts. Right, right. He was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, I'm so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Quirrell is uh, interesting, and we'll learn more about him. Yes, we will. Oh yeah, for definitely. sure. Yes, we will. So Diagon Alley, guys, we're here. I mean, I mean, what what can you not say about this place? We were wondering how Harry felt going and seeing this place for the first time. Mm-hmm. I remember my first trip down Diagon Alley. I mean, I had tears in my eyes, and you don't even know where to look, so I can't even imagine how Harry, feel, Harry felt. Yeah. He says he wishes he had about eight more eyes because you just can't possibly see everything that there is to see. It's his first real immersion into the magical world after the Leaky Cauldron, mm-hmm. but this is him actually like seeing spell books and cauldrons and everything's right there in real life, right before his eyes. It's tangible. It's touchable. Yeah. It's really real now. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then they get to Gringotts, and I think this is his first time seeing a magical creature. Yeah. He gets to see a goblin. Yeah. And I think it's cool to read the what, poem mm-hmm. that Gringotts mm-hmm. has. Yeah. So it says, enter stranger, but take heed of what awaits the sin of greed. For those who take but do not earn must pay most dearly in their turn. So if you seek beneath our floors a treasure that was never yours, thief, you have been warned, beware of finding more than treasure there. And Hagrid even says you'd be mad to break in, but, you know, Harry does that. (laughs) Challenge accepted. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's cool to point out that Griphook takes him to his vault. Mm -hmm. That's some extreme foreshadowing. Yep. Uh, Harry finds out that he is super rich. Super rich. He's got all these galleons just stacked up in his vault. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Oh, yeah. And Fleamont and And all all those others. Curious Mm -hmm. names. Skelogro and all that jazz. And then we get to see this mysterious package in Vault 713. And we were thinking, that's a really small number for a vault. So how large is Gringotts? Is this a very old vault? Whose vault is it? Is it Dumbledore's? Is it a Hogwarts vault? Is it perhaps a vault that you can rent? Can you rent high security vaults? Did it belong to Nicholas Flamel? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I'm sure that it's Dumbledore's and he maybe just has a couple. I'm sure you can have more than one. Multiple bank accounts. Yeah, it's kind of like a checking and a savings, right? So like, (laughs) I don't know. Could be. So he has like his normal vault and then a super high security vault that only a goblin can get in with touching. I don't know. Or maybe they like discussed with one of the goblins and was like, we have this thing. No one can have it. Cause we need I'm it. sure they know. I, I bet you the goblins know it. Oh, yeah, yeah, they know. Oh, for sure. I'm sure they know yeah. it's in every single one of them. Yeah. One of the vaults, like all hundred million of them. Well, I was just thinking, like, it couldn't... But first, so my thought process was Hogwarts. No way. They got to have a bunch of other gold in there for, um, like, um, students who can't buy their own things, such as Tom Riddle. And then I was thinking Dumbledore's, and then I thought, no way. He's going to have some money. Wouldn't they buy Ron a new wand? They bought Harry a broom. Tom didn't have anybody, though. Harry Ron has a family. Yeah, who has no money. I'm just saying. But they get by. Yeah. I mean, they make it work. About, it wasn't even his wand in the first place. Think about this, the school system in America and yeah. how messed up getting loans and stuff is here. I mean, just because the Weasleys are poor doesn't mean that they would necessarily qualify for assistance. Truth. Yeah, but nobody pays for shit at Hogwarts. I'm sorry. Except <laughs> except your school supplies. Everybody yeah. has to pay for their own school supplies. Except so, for certain right. cases, such as time. Like someone coming from an orphanage. Um, so then I was thinking... Which unfortunately is funded for by people like Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> Corruption at its best. Yeah. And then I was thinking Flamel, but no, Flamel was like a billion years old. He would have a bunch of money. So I was thinking, I think it was like Dumbledore and Flamel are like talking about this. Do you think that Dumbledore was like conversing with Flamel that like he just knew that Voldemort was like coming back? Did he know Quirrell was into some deep stuff? Did he try to like protect this? Like why so high security? Well, clearly we know what it is, but then why remove it to come to the safer place? Yeah, yeah, it's really. interesting that they're like, oh, there's no place safer than Hogwarts. Well, three 11 year olds got through the whole thing. So, how safe could it really be? No, but I'm just wondering, like, why remove it? But the, I think the only reason Harry really got through it was because at the end, he was never going to eat. I mean, but he still got there. What are you talking about? In the, the end, end of the book. The book. The end. Are you talking about like the moving mirror? the stone oh. and having all those well, obstacles? Just in general. I thought you were talking about Gringotts, and I was like, not only that, but do you think that Harry really would have gotten past the troll if it hadn't helped in the fact that the reason why they found that key is because the wing was broken? And I think a lot of it was luck. Harry would never would have gotten through the potions room without Hermione. No. Well, yes, I say three 11 year olds. Yeah. Well, actually, Hermione was probably already 12. So two 11 year olds and a 12 year old. I don't know when Ron's I birthday think she is. Was. No, she was because her birthday's in September. Oh, my. But anyways, I think it was just like a, a special vault that was taken out. You know? I can yeah. understand that. Yeah. I could understand that. 
So next, Harry is going to Madam. Is it Malkins or Milkins? I say Malkins. Um, to get fitted for his robes for Hogwarts. And while he is there, he, um, I said, like, it's probably becoming more real for him getting, like, you know, his uniform, essentially, like, his robes. Like, I remember when I was in school, especially when I was going to high school, I had to wear a uniform. It was like, oh, my God, it's super real. Like, I'm going. I'm going to school. I'm going. I'm going to get educated. Educated. Um, And that's where he meets Draco, and he's immediately reminded of Dudley. Um, And this is the first time he really hears about Hogwarts and the houses. So Draco basically introduces Harry into the world with um, biased. First of all, he's talking about, like, um, he asks Harry about his parents, and he's like, well, where are your parents? And he's like, oh, they're dead. And he goes, oh, but they were our kind, right? Like, Didn't even care that his parents were dead. Yeah. Just automatically, yeah. were they witch and, and wizard? He was, like, saying that meaning pure blood. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he talks about, like, not letting, like, the, a certain kind into the school, a.k.a. Um, Muggleborns. And Harry's first hearing of, like, all of the houses... And he even talks about he being Draco talks about um, how he like just hopes like Hufflepuff like he doesn't like that he's essentially saying I can't talk right now. <laughs> you were doing just fine. Uh, he talks bad about Hufflepuff. Yeah, like so he's talking yeah. bad. Immediately talks bad about so that's Hufflepuff. His first impression of Hufflepuff is that <laughs> yeah, and they're a load of duffers. I'm like, so J.K. basically was setting Hufflepuffs up for failure from jump because Harry first hears about it and it's negative. So yeah. his first inclination to any of the houses, especially Hufflepuff, is like, oh, like that's the one that like no one wants to be in. I'm probably going to be a Hufflepuff because. No, I'm not good enough to be in any of these other houses. Mm-hmm. Even Hagrid kind of makes fun of Hufflepuff. He does. Too, He's at Ron does too. Yeah. 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 Why though? Like super uh, upsetting. Yeah. Mm. Well, because they're the house that is known to just take who's left over. But doesn't that you know? mean that we are a mix of all the other houses? Yeah. Yeah. We don't fit in anywhere else. That doesn't mean that we're not cool. Just means I mean, we have I'm qualities not saying from everywhere. That you're not. It's just no. I think that's no. What I know. Each house has its own, like. Good things and bad things. Like there's, I agree. You know. Agreed. Yeah, I like Hagrid. I like uh, my color, so I'm happy with Ravenclaw. I look good in blue. Hagrid like says that. something about them being. Oh, they say they're a lot of duffers. A load of duffers. Yeah. 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 And so um, no respect. Nope. Really, the entire time Draco has nothing but good things to say. He ta- he um, talks bad about Hagrid and calls him a savage, which makes Harry like him even less. Yeah. And this is also the first time Harry hears anything about Quidditch. And um, this is where you find out that first years are not allowed to have a broom, which comes up later because Harry ends up making the team and um, he gets a broom as a, I almost said as a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, so as a first year, he ends up getting a broom, which causes some angst with Draco because essentially after this, they become, you know, each other's enemies. nemesis. Mortal enemies. Yes. Kind of like on the train, though. Yeah, like, I don't think... He doesn't realize, like, Draco he, doesn't He decides realize. that he does not like this kid, yeah. straight up. But then, like, yeah. when they get on the train, he's like... Done. Draco's a little jerk on the train. Yeah, he's not He's nice. a jerk oh, yeah. in every aspect of his Always. life. Always. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So then we, uh, we're heading I into... I will say oh, okay. about Draco. Okay, okay. He is a product of his environment. I agree he's with better that. in Cursed Child. Ugh. Let's not talk about it. But Draco's good in Cursed Child. I like him. I'm just saying. He's too wimpy. Silence. Moving on. Okay. We have to acknowledge that it exists. Agreed. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> At least right. I'm safe inside my mind. <laughs> <laughs> then we head into Flourish and Blots and then the rest of the stories. Harry goes into Flourish and Blots and he reads book titles that he says would make Dudley go wild, <laughs> which I just found really funny. And then Hagrid has to drag him away from curses and counter curses because Harry wants to find something to curse Dudley with. <laughs> and Hagrid's like, you can't do any of those yet. Like, you're, you don't have the skills yet. He could try. He <laughs> could try. Here's Harry worrying about how he knows nothing, but he's already plotting to curse right. Dudley. Right. <laughs> Right, and that's the Horcrux inside <laughs> him. That's just sassy Harry coming that, out. That makes me laugh. 
And so we also find out here that um, Harry can't use magic in the muggle world except for in special circumstances, which is major foreshadowing for the Dementor attacks later. Dementors, and when Dementors. Harry gets the boot and his hearing and then gets back in and all that jazz. We'll get there in three years. And we'll get there. all that jazz. And Harry, um, he, he tries to buy a solid gold cauldron and then Hagrid, being the good father figure that he is, oh. doesn't let him buy it. <laughs> And um, he gets, you know, his supplies at the apothecary. Slug and jiggers. Yes. And I feel really bad because here is where we find out that toads are lame pets. And Neville Longbottom has a toad. And so I feel like when we get on the train and he, like, sees that Neville has a toad, Harry's probably like, you know, loser. It's going to be the first <laughs> thing he thinks of. Because Hagrid even says, oh, I'm not going to get you a toad. Those are out of style. Out of style, you'll get laughed at. Yeah. Poor, poor Neville. Poor Neville. Like, I feel like, again, J.K. Rowling set him up for, like, a little bit of failure. Do you th- was Neville a hat stall? Yes. Okay. Because he asked yeah. the hat. A Huffle, was like, Hufflepuff. The, the hat wanted him in Gryffindor, and he was like, no, I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm a Hufflepuff. The hat's like... No, you're not. That's like you're gonna slice off Nagini's head. Like, can you just <laughs> yeah, please so like, I, so you can pull not. this sword out of the hat and end this war? You're gonna have BA status. You need to go. Over yes. You're also going to age very well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matthew Lewis, for the eye candy. And please come oh to Muggle Net Live. Hottest thing to come out of Hogwarts. <laughs> <sighs> um, and then Harry gets his first real birthday present from Hagrid, a snowy owl that later is going to be named Hedwig. And Hedwig becomes Harry's first, like, real, like, friend that's around all the time. What do we say? Per- I don't know. Because, like, Hagrid friend. is his first friend, but Hedwig is, like, a pet first friend. You know yeah. what I mean? But truly, she's, she's forever friend. She's, she's forever like, friend or whatever. She's I mean, the first thing that doesn't flinch at the sight of him at home at Dursley. Yeah. Right. The Dursleys, she's you know? the piece of the wizarding world that can come with him always to the Dursleys. She's, she's his constant Edward. connection. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not only that, but she transfers his mail, which also is connection to the Wizarding World. Ooh. Pour one out for Hedwig. Love Hedwig. I love Hedwig. And and Hedwig is a little bit sassy, just like Harry gets sassy. Mm. I love when she, like, nips him. And then she'll look at him when she's mad at him. (laughs) Yes, but she's also, like, just so incredibly faithful. And, like, when he's sending letters, like, to Sirius back and forth, like, she's always up for it. Hedwig is a Hufflepuff. She's loyal. Yeah. Okay. Loyal owl. She's also brave if you think about it because she dove in front of that curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mary. Or loyal. I think she's I mean, a Gryffindor owl, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I am like Tiffany. <laughs> Gryffindor! But then we head into Ollivanders, which um, was Harry's main uh, attraction. He was most excited about Ollivanders. Yes, he wanted he to get a wand. Don't we all? I want one. I'm going to get one when I, I go. Wait. I have one already, but. That's okay. So (laughs) wands are a pretty big topic. Intense. Yeah. So there's a ton of information on Pottermore about wand cores, the woods, and the lengths. And we went into it a little bit when we described our wands from Pottermore. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that we're going to save that probably for a whole extra episode where we'll really delve into all of the cores and woods and lengths and what they mean and everything. Yes. Um, so I thought that it would be cool maybe to talk about the measurements in the wizarding world, which I did touch on slightly in the last episode, but Ollivander takes the time to do all these really weird measurements on Harry, which I think is kind of funny. Like what the circumference of his head and his the nostrils. length, nostrils. Yeah, his nostrils. Yeah, I like that one. All that kind of stuff. Um, so again, it's just J.K. really makes it a point to be super quirky with the measurements. That it, you know, it's very different from the Muggle government in the in terms of like the metric system. And the the Muggle government switches to the metric system, but the wizards just totally ignore that change and stick with their own thing, and they just kind of all over the place with measurements. Um, So didn't you say that when they were publishing the book, they wanted to transfer everything over to metric? Yeah, Yeah, that was kind of funny. J.K. writes on Pottermore that she had written all of these measurements in inches and miles and on purpose. feet on purpose because 
as I just said, the witches and wizards ignored the conversion to the metric system. However, I guess it's like a requirement in Great Britain that whenever you are publishing a book, all measurements be converted to the metric system. So she actually like kind of had to put up a fight for it to keep it in the American measurements. Um, mm-hmm. So that was kind of a cool little side story. I think that's fantastic. Can I just point out that I would like us to be using the metric system because it's just so much easier to understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're different. I'm just saying, like, you know. <laughs> I know. We should. 10 up. centimeters is a meter, blah, blah, blah. Just so much. It's just easier. But <laughs> God whatever. forbid we be the same as the rest of the world. We have well, to be I guess different. it'd be really expensive to change everything over. Oh, goodness. Great Britain did it in the 60s. We could do it. I, mean, I, I guarantee <laughs> it's not happening now. All right. Moving on. <laughs> so the <sighs> big takeaway from Ollivander's, which I think is super fun and cool, I is that take away. the wand chooses the wizard. That is like Ollivander's big thing that he's explaining <laughs> to Harry. Lie. It's, uh, you know, Harry goes through a ton of wands. It's just like a pile in the corner. Yeah. And he's like, am I ever going to get one? Like, what's going on? And then Ollivander's like, well, the wand will choose you. Um which is a cool concept. And then finally, he just has this epiphany that maybe he should have Harry try this one wand that has a phoenix tail feather in it. Um, And that is the one. And we then soon discover that it is a twin core with a Voldemort's wand. And I wonder if Harry would have gotten a different wand had he not been a Horcrux. Oh. That's a good thought. That's really interesting. Probably, I would think. I would think as well. However, yeah. who the, knows? <laughs> but I bet you. Did we talk about like the him. wood and the phoenix feather? Describe Harry as a person. They well, we do can, describe Harry very yeah. well. We'll discuss it. Too. I don't know if it would necessarily be like the twin one, right? Yeah. right. But it may have been a different phoenix. phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Curious. yeah. But definitely, we're gonna dive into wands. Like we're gonna go hardcore into wands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How funny Because we're going to talk about the wood That could be hard or soft flexibility True And their cores So it is going to be hard Hardcore core. <laughs> Hardcore All right. So yeah the cool thing with twin cores I love HP lexicon I'm just throwing that out there You guys are sweet um, So Harry and Voldemort's wands Are extremely unique Whereas they actually contain a feather From the exact same phoenix Which is like Save another feather Hardly I, I mean I, they might, It might be the only one of it That it's done that I'm not 100% positive on that fact But I'm just assuming It's really that rare um, And not only that But a cool little fact Is that the, f- the phoenix That gave the feather For well, the, both feathers Is Fox Dumbledore's phoenix Yep Oh, I did not know that. Really? Really? No. Yeah, it's Fox. I love it when we get these reactions. <laughs> wait, I know. wait, what? Yeah, mm-hmm. Fox His... gave those feathers. Shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold on. Yep. So what? some of the cool things that happen because of the twin cores is the reverse spell effect, Priori Incantatum, mm-hmm. in the graveyard in Goblet of Fire. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say that you weren't you just saying that you didn't know if it gave any other ones? One it, other feather. <laughs> it gave another feather, just one other. So Fox no, only gave the two. I know, but I'm just saying I wonder if, like, has that. a unicorn ever given two hairs or. You oh, know what I mean? yeah, like, I get what you're saying. Are the twin cores, uh, are they super, they would have super to be. rare or, like, hold on? Does it never happen? Is hold this on. the only instance? I you, don't know. You can pluck feathers from phoenixes. You can pluck tail hairs from unicorns. Are we slaying dragons to get their heartstrings? Yeah. That's why dragon heartstring wands tend to go to the dark side more often, I believe, because you actually have have to to kill kill something. (gasps) Sad. Yeah, my wand has a dragon heartstring in it. Well, we know because you're a a unicorn here. Mine too. Yeah. Phoenix. (laughs) So, yeah. Gave another feather. Just Just one other. It's curious. Okay, no, we're not doing that. We're not going to quote the movie. When his brother (laughs) gave you (laughs) that scar. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and he's dead. Pour one out for him. Yeah, a lot of people in the podcast. Well, like, not just, he's not in the the books, but in real life, he is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's very sad. He just died within the past 12 months, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, in January, I believe he did. Yeah. 
Very sad. Because they did a tribute for him at the Harry Potter celebration at Universal in January. Yeah. Was that John Hurt? Yes. Yes. Ah, this is random. Oh, jeez. But when they were um, trying to get to the Sorcerer's Stone, mm-hmm. um, there was two 12-year-olds and one 11-year-old. Okay. Here the youngest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Ron was 12. I forgot about that. All right. Well, I think that's all that we really need to talk about for Wands right now because, again, like we said, we're going to do a special episode all about it and we'll go super in-depth. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. So, yeah, Harry finally gets his wand and it's twin core and it's cool. It's cool. It's Holly. Mm-hmm. Phoenix tail feather. Yep. It's Holly and the ivy. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I think it's rigid, isn't it? Harry's I, wand? I don't know. How long is it? 10, 11? I feel Here, like I'll it's go look 10 it up. and a quarter. I just made that up. Maybe. Four, nine and three quarters. <laughs> think it'll be unfunny, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter wand. Somewhere on Pottermore. Yeah, if you go to his page. On yeah, the bottom, it's got it all of the you. info. Yeah, tell me the link. Holly and Phoenix Feather, 11 inches, nice 11. and supple. It shares its core with yeah. the Voldemort's wand. Supple. Cool. So not rigid. So that brings us to the end of their shopping trip. Yeah. So Harry just has had the best day ever. I think this tops the zoo because he doesn't <laughs> yeah, set, a, yeah. set a python on anybody. <laughs> I really hope taps so. the zoo. So he just finds out he's magical, that he's famous. He's seen all these amazing magical things. He's got this brand new owl, this magic wand, all these cool magical everything. Yeah. And now he has to go back to the Dursleys for a whole month. For a month. And Hagrid's so nice. He tells him any problems. <laughs> you just send Hedwig. And But here's Harry who... He's still just down on himself. He says that everyone thinks he's special, but he doesn't know anything about magic, so how can anyone expect anything great from him? He's famous, but he can't even remember what he's possibly famous for. Yeah. So even after finding out that he has this gift, he's still so humble and just still so shocked that anything good like this could happen to him. And Hagrid, being the great father figure he is, just says, don't worry, you're going to learn fast enough. You're not the only one. You've been singled out, and that's hard, but you're going to have a great time. I did. I still do. And I think that really shows how Hagrid sees himself in Harry once yeah. again. Yeah. I think Harry also finds comfort in knowing that, you know, Hagrid's going to be there for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll yeah. at least know somebody there. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Not only that, but does Hagrid say anything about how there's, like, Muggleborns and how he's... He, no. How he's not the only I think one that is going to come in not knowing anything about the wizarding world. He might say that later. Well, but uh, who's At his first muggle-born that he meets? Hermione, who's read every book ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I've read it. Hogwarts a history. <laughs> Which I wish we had that. Yes. yes. Uh, I know. Joe. It'd be a great <laughs> coffee table book. Just saying. It'd be a great any kind of book. Any kind yes. of book. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so that uh, brings us to our lightning bolt round. And um, so my question is, it's not really a yes or no, but you have to give, like, just one example. If you were to open a shop in Diagon Alley, what kind of shop would you open? A bookstore. Candy. Probably a hair place. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be awesome. Magical hairdos. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be yeah, so cool. Can we have a graphic design spot in Diagon Alley? Ooh. We could <laughs> oh, be like, imagine. we could live the life of Mina Lima. But things Shout would out move. to the designers of the Wizarding World. They're amazing. Mina yes. Lima. I was thinking that I would want to open like a, like training of like magical creatures. Like, Ooh. That'd be cool. like yeah, store. like dog training, but yeah, but for like all kinds of creatures. Like that. What if you had like a pet grooming salon and you, you did could take weird your things to yeah. and horns. owls? Crumple Snorkak. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is what place would you be most excited about going? All of uh, You took mine. Oh, I'm sorry. It's cool. okay. <laughs> so, we could choose two. <laughs> I would, I would be looking just like Harry like, Ollivanders. Let's say okay. you already have your wand. Okay. Or even just as a little kid, you're not necessarily even going there yeah, like at 11. Line. Quidditch, but Quidditch shop. Yeah. Be pretty cool. Yeah. That'd I have two. Cool. Either the Quidditch shop or the magical menagerie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Florian cool. Fortescue's. Let's get some ice cream. Yeah. 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 Do they have magical flavors? What they would be a magical flavors? flavor? Well, let's get ready for MuggleNet Live and I'll discuss the, all the flavors that we'll be able to eat. Yeah. 
Earl Grey and lavender. It's mm. really no, it's, no, it's really, really good. good. I just don't. I'm not the biggest fan of Earl Grey. Neither. And I had green tea ice so cream, good. and it's really good. So it's good. Mm. Chocolate chili, which I've never had. Kind of weird, oh, but I bet you cool. that's good because they put chili in hot chocolate sometimes. Not that I can drink it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Butterbeer flavored ice cream. I would be willing to try that. I think I would it's, like. We that. get that at MuggleNet Live. You get all of these yeah. at MuggleNet Live. Oh yeah. my gosh! Um, strawberry and peanut butter. Yeah, I'm strawberry. So drunk on butterbeer, peanut butter, but like drunk on love because it's not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a sugar high, that's for sure. Yeah. I can't wait, and I'm so excited for you guys to try it. Like I was telling Ezra when we were at. Um, that Harry Potter Fest. Shout out to Rebel Watch. Hello, yes. Rebel Watch. <laughs> it, oh my God, I'm like, it is so good. It is so good. The is frozen, it good? The frozen butterbeer is amazing. <laughs> no, the hot the butter foam. beer. Well, we're going to have all of it. Yeah. I can't wait Unlimited. to try it. Yes. There won't be Un- hot butterbeer, unfortunately, but that I Limited. think is the best. Oh, it's the best. I mean, as long as you get foam. Can we eat it the next day? Oh, also no. there's clotted cream ice cream, which it's sounds really gross. Really gross oh, interesting. But I, it's one of my faves. It it's just really tastes good. like it's you're like eating cream, cream cheese. cheese. Cream cheese. It's really good. Oh, wow. All right. And put, then there's we put clotted oh, cream on, um, on scones. Yeah. And scones. Sticky toffee pudding is another flavor, which... Sticky biscuits. I don't biscuits. know if I like toffee. Oh, oh my I God. Do. Those things were delicious. They were really great. When we were at oh. Kent Potter Fest, we got a sticky biscuit from... What's the coffee place there that we got? Tree City, City Coffee. Tree City Coffee. Shout out to them. Dude, you guys had oh, great stuff. Yeah, actually... Your coffee was amazing. Yeah. Yesterday... Which was just black coffee. Yesterday, we <laughs> just went to Popton Kent, and they're the ones that had the butterbeer ice cream at... Um, Kent Potter Fest yeah, and they, they had a long line. They still had it. What? So I'm like, man, this is the way to do it. I'm going to come a week after Potter Fest yeah. really? <laughs> and walk right in and get it. It was amazing. It was really good. It was real good. We'll Their give you another so uh, shout out if you save some ice cream for all of us and then we'll all go <laughs> yeah. to your shop. So, yeah. But even they, they had butter beer at... Um, Tree City Coffee, and they had some alcoholic butterbeer as well, which was really good. Yeah, the butterbeer was really, really good. I have a lightning bolt round question. Okay, what's your question? What pet would you want? Owl. Cat. Well, duh. Cat. Duh. Probably owl. That's obvious, too. No uh, toads. I'm not <laughs> You'll a be toad laughed at. I'm not an amphibian kind of girl. Yeah, me either. Um... I'm trying to think of what other... I would have... I like snakes, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be opposed to a rat. Oh, I thousand percent yeah. would. Can we have ferrets? I love rats. <laughs> you ferrets know what? Cool. I'll just take Fozzie Bear. James Potter, little James Potter, Do you have had a, a ferret in the movie. He, he was did. pushing in his cart, so maybe yeah. they changed the rules later Ferrets on. are hilarious. So they funny. really are. They're cute. They stink, but they they're hilarious. Smell. You can get their like glands removed, but... I think they still smell even yeah. after that. <laughs> Don't they like, aren't they like litter box strained like cats? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that all we have? Katie, Katie, you had the same question as Sarah. Correct? Yeah, that's, that's the only one I had. All right. Anybody have any other last minute Diagon Alley type lightning bolt round questions? Ooh, do you think that the first time ever flew powdering there, <laughs> would you say it correctly or would you also be Ooh. like Harry? Because I think that he, nah, I mean, as much as like he tried to, I probably would say it incorrectly, A, because I can't talk, and B, because there's people staring <laughs> at yet, me. But yet she's a podcast host. I know. <laughs> How ironic. But like, I, I don't think I would say it correctly. I think I'd be okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd be fine. I think I'd be all right. Flu powder no. is a little terrifying, though, stepping into the yeah. flames. Green flames. And the See, way... Yes. Green flames. And if you think about it, the way Ding. they describe it <laughs> is like... Um, like they even said to Harry, they're like, "Oh, make sure you get out the right fire, the right grate." Yeah, that, oh, how are you supposed to know? That makes me so and they, nervous. And they just thrust all this upon him, and they're like, "Go!" And okay, then bye. that's why he's like, "Get out!" Know. <laughs> I think that I would say it right, but I would get out at the wrong fireplace. I'd be like, "I think yeah, this is it." Would oh, I'm in I wonder what house. that looks like. <laughs> I, I'm trying to like put it. You know how you make the movie in your head when you read the book? Oh yeah, visualize it. Like, I just, like, to me, it's, like, great, 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 great with, like, signs and then, like, smoke oh, everywhere. Yeah. That's I how see I see it, it see, in my But head. I also probably can't see very well. So I'd be, You've like... You've got a lot of ailments I know. <laughs> I feel like I would be... I, would, like, I can't talk. Say, I can't see. She'd be, like, <laughs> getting out at someone's house and be, like, oops, sorry. <laughs> Tried to get to Diagon Alley and it's, like... You know, somewhere. they're like having tea in their living room, like, and you're like, out. Right? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> like, do you have any flu powder? <laughs> yeah, can I go back in here right now? 
Um, oh my gosh. Another question I could ask is, would you, if you were like 11, 12 years old and you're in Diagon Alley with your parents and, you know, school shopping, would you try to sneak off to Nocturne Alley? Yes. Yeah. No. I mean, obviously this one would. <laughs> <laughs> Megan lives in Nocturne Alley. I she's a resident. She's Nocturne the owner Alley. of it all. <laughs> she's I'm not a- just buying flesh eating slug repellent, you guys. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm an extreme rule follower, so you know I, would, I am no. too. But I feel like as a kid, I'd be really curious. If, especially if I was like, even though I was with my parents and my friends were with me, I'd be like, "Oh, we're totally going." Yeah, I totally wouldn't. I'd be the yeah. goody two shoes. See, but if you were with me, I'd make you go, and then the whole time you'd be very nervous. Yeah, that's true. I'd be like, we need to leave now. We, I have a I have a question. I just thought of what magical drink would you order at the Leaky Cauldron? Fishy green ale. That sounds gross. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Gosh, I gotta eat. Sounds gross, but Fireball. it's delish. Fire whiskey. Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> Otters fizzing. I don't know all the drinks. What's it, what's it called? Fizzing. I'd probably, oh, I'd probably get fire whiskey because drink. I like that cinnamon kind of thing going on. Which one? Would you say fire whiskey? I would say or butter beer. You know, yeah. But I'd, I'd ask save them that for, for a Bud verses. Light. <laughs> they they don't. Use They're not can, paying us to say that. I really, <laughs> see, but Bud Light, if you're listening, my family <laughs> would love you to sponsor their life because we essentially make you money because we buy Bud Light way too often. Hashtag Irish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else with lightning bolt round questions? No. That they just off the top. All right. That's going to lead us into our fan featured Potter story for this episode. All right, this one is from Kelly McMillan. She says, when I was seven years old, my mom said to me... There's she this- really said mom because she she's did. from Australia. Yep, just saying. Mom. 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 So Aww, her Kelly. mom said, there's this new series that I think you'd really like. Everyone says it's great. But I thought it sounded dumb and refused. Does this sound familiar <laughs> to anybody? <laughs> this is, not to me, but This you is guys. why Kelly is one of our best friends, yeah. I'm assuming. <laughs> she says she refused for months. One day, my mom b- brought home for me the Chamber of Secrets. She had borrowed it from a co-worker's kid. The first one was on loan to someone else, so she brought me the second. I begrudgingly read it just so I could tell her how much I didn't like it. Just like I said, I wouldn't, but I fell in love and devoured it. Little crying, crying laughy face. Laugh face emoji. <laughs> I can't remember if we bought or borrowed book one, but I read that next and then book three. Then I had to wait for book four to come out. It wasn't even too weird reading them out of order, though. I remember a lot of things from book two making much more sense once I'd gone back to book one. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, that's pretty cool that you're able to just. Keep yeah. it all together in your head. And there's sh- a lot going on. And she was waiting for releases before we were. Yeah. Darn you for being into it before. Yeah, me. you were no, you were jealous. waiting before we were because we were all waiting for book five, correct? Yeah, yeah, I had read one through four and had to wait for five. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Kelly, we really appreciate you sharing your Potter story with us. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. And <laughs> we miss you. Come back to the States. Yes, please. Or have us over. Yeah, yeah. That too. <laughs> Take me to the Australian zoo so that I can meet Bindi Irwin and oh, she she's can, so cool. She can give me a koala to hold. Oh, <laughs> I think they would terrify me. No, Gosh, they're cute. Are so they comfy. nice? Who am I thinking? Yeah, oh, nice. sloths. Maybe they're not nice when they're older. Mm. Okay, I, think koalas I don't know about nice. sloths. So oh, now that we're talking about Australia. <laughs> um, Make sure that you guys go and like our Facebook page and post your Potter stories so that we can feature you on an episode. And also, please review us on iTunes and then comment on the pinned post on our Facebook page so that you can receive a free Swish and Flick button you have until September 1st. Also, find us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and we even have a Tumblr. Tumblr! <laughs> <laughs> so find us at Swish Flick Cast or Swish and Flick Podcast. Tell us about your thoughts, your disagreements, anything else that you want. We want to hear from you. We and love also, hearing from you. We love yes. hearing from our yes. listeners. We love the comments. We Keep read them, them all. We truly yeah. do. And then we discuss them in length. <laughs> without you around. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but so make sure you subscribe to us on Podbean. Um, <laughs> make sure you subscribe, subscribe to us on Podbean or iTunes because that way our new episodes will come to you first. Or subscribe on both. I'm just yeah. saying. Subscribe yeah. on both. I'm Why not? Subscribed I'm subscribed on, on all. Go ahead yeah. on Stitcher and subscribe there. Go find us on YouTube. Google Play and <laughs> the tube of you. The tube of you. <laughs> <laughs> just right. subscribe everywhere. Yes. 
All right. So that's it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening and don't let the muggles get you down. Thank you for your ears. (laughs) (gasps) Amazing. Just my voice. (laughs) And it's for nosebleed. No. No, it's so good. F F is for friends who lives in the forest. (laughs) U U is for the unicorn. U is for under the cover, under the stairs. (laughs) And is for nifflers. And is for nifflers stealing. I was gonna start. (laughs) You all ready now? I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) So much wasted recorded time. That was again. All right, here we go. Hello and well. <laughs> <laughs> Will that pick up?